Rachel in Boulder, Colorado. We have a Rachel. <laughs> she runs our engineering department. I, all right. Hey, Paul, what do you do when measurements say a component is excellent, but your ears tell you something is off? Over your career, how often have you trusted listening over data, and how do you reconcile the two without falling into pure subjectivity? Woo! All right, there's a loaded question. <laughs> well, part of it is a simple answer. Measurements don't tell the whole story. They can, and we just don't do it. We don't have the proper measurements, and they are not typical. Let me give you some examples. The typical measurements are THD, total harmonic distortion, uh, oh, uh, intermodulation distortion, when you have two waveforms that interact with each other, they produce a certain amount of extra stuff you don't want. That's called distortion. But there are so many types of distortions that we don't measure, that aren't part of our measuring suite, that affect sonics, that it's almost laughable to imagine anything different, okay? So let's talk about some of those. Slew rate. Slew rate is the ability and the rate at which a transient happens. It can go from here to here. How quickly does that happen? What shape does it take? If I go like that, or I have a bell, and ding, it's going from nothing to bark really quickly, right? My electronics needs to reproduce that. Now, this isn't typically part of the measurement. We just hope that it has enough frequency response to handle it. That's fine. But what about the slew rate? How quickly can it move from point A to point B? And what happens when it does that? Does it keep going and then go, whoa, 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 and bring it back down? That's called overshoot. We look at square waves. Square waves tell us quite a bit. We don't listen to square waves, but we look at them. And I could go on, SID, uh, TIM, um, how much feedback, all of it, all of it has a direct impact on how music sounds, how well your loudspeakers disappear, how when you close your eyes, you imagine musicians playing in front of you. The people that come here to the listening lab, come up here to Octave Studios, their jaws drop. They hear things that they did not know could come out of a pair of loudspeakers. And much of that is because we listen when we design. So we always start with measurements. Nothing gets out of the lab until it measures properly. To the best of our ability, low distortion, low noise, uh, um, good square wave response, make sure that it has the bandwidth that you're expecting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the starting point. That's just where we start. For most companies, that's where it ends. Hey, it measures well, <laughs> done. Not us. That's the starting point. Now we take it into the listening lab and we start that process. How does it sound? Why doesn't it sound as well as it does or it could? How good could it sound? What happens if we do this? What happens if we do that? I, I always like to use food as an analogy, but we all as designers have the same group of foods that we can mix and match to make something work. And if you put all these together, you could measure it and say, yeah, the calorie count is this, the fat count is that, life should be good. Tastes like dog meat, but that's okay. So. A great chef will make something taste great because he's tasting it. We're listening to it and tweaking it, listening, tweaking until it finally gets to where we want it to be. 
and something we want to take home and listen to. And that's, that's the key. All right, enough rambling. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.